Hello and welcome. This is NTA Tuesday Live and I'm Cyril Stober. Now the National Assembly, in what it considers as deepening democracy, presented an electoral amendment bill to the President for assent. Now the interest centers on electronic voting and the release of results of the 2019 general elections. The timing and repeated pitfalls in the process of amending the Electoral Act attracted reactions as many cite scarce resources and implementation period due to the fact that the elections are barely two months from now. Already some politicians are seeking legal interpretation of the move that might affect them, as they say. Their reasons include how, how informed are the electorate at the grassroots for total electronic process when they're still struggling with the card reader system introduced by the Independent National Electoral Commission. Now, President Buhari has withheld assent to the new electoral amendment bill, advising the National Assembly to save the nation's democracy by ensuring that the electoral amendment bill 2018 comes into effect after the February 2019 polls. The president said the process leading to the election had since begun under the 2015 Electoral Act, and it could cause implementation uncertainty about the applicable legislation to govern the process. Now, with the position of the legislature and the executive apart, what is the way out? What's the standard practice in amending electoral laws? And where is the place of national interest? These are some of the questions we'll be raising tonight on NT Tuesday Live. But first, let's get to see this report by Timothy Yusuf. The Electoral Act is a piece of legislation that guides how Nigeria conducts its elections. It also guides the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, in its operations, mainly business of conducting elections at state and the federal levels. This is not the first time Nigeria is amending its Electoral Act. Findings show that the Electoral Act has previously been amended in 2004, 2006 and 2010 by Parliament as the nation seeks to strengthen and improve conduct of elections, which is the backbone of any democracy. The Eighth National Assembly, according to experts, began work on the Electoral Amendment Bill in 2016. Many say the bill is to raise the level of transparency, credibility and acceptability of the electoral process. President Muhammadu Buhari, however, declined assent to the bill in a letter addressed to the National Assembly. President Buhari said, and I quote, Post 1 to Section 58, Subsection 4 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, as amended, I hereby convey to the House of Representatives my decision to decline presidential assent to the Electoral Amendment Bill 2018 recently passed by the National Assembly. End of quote. President Buhari said he was withholding his assent because he is concerned that passing a new electoral bill this far into the electoral process for the 2019 general elections, which commenced under the 2015 Electoral Act, could create some uncertainty about the applicable legislation to govern the process. Any real or apparent change to the rules this close to the election may provide an opportunity for disruption and confusion in respect of which law governs the electoral process. President Buhari was essentially saying that it is too close to the election to change the rules of the game, because doing so will leave election officials and voters confused, citing drafting issues as another reason why he can't affix his signature to the Electoral Amendment Bill. The presidency is also of the belief that Nigeria still doesn't practice electronic voting because collation, counting and announcement are still being achieved manually. At best, the only electronic component of the voting process at the moment is the smart card reader which is used for authentication or accreditation. With the rejection of the bill, President Buhari is also saying it is too late to implement electronic voting nationwide because elections are only two months away. So, the card reader wasn't one of the reasons why the bill was rejected. 
as card readers would be used in 2019 anyway. This is the fourth time President Buhari would be refusing his assent to the bill, having previously withheld assent to the bill, citing the hijack of the powers of INEC and the reordering of the sequence of elections by parliament as reasons. The question is, what happens now that President Buhari has rejected the bill? Gets on Tuesday Live are set to provide answers to these and other issues. In Abuja, Timothy Yusuf, NT News. All right, that reports us the tone for tonight's discussion. Let's introduce our guest to you. We'd like to welcome to this program Senator Ahmed Lowen, who's the Senate leader. Thanks for being with us here tonight. Thank you very much. Sure. We're joined by Shitu Kabir Mohammed, presidential candidate, ABDA, and chairman, Forum of Presidential Candidates. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Let me also welcome to this program Mr. Festo Sokoye. He is National Commissioner and Chairman, Information and Voters Education Committee of the Independent National Electoral Commission. Thanks for being here. Thank you very much. And we are also joined by Dr. Chidi Amadi, a public policy <coughs> analyst. Thanks for being here. Yes, Chairman Amadi. Okay, right. <coughs> All right, so thanks, Jima, for coming up tonight. We do expect that in the course of this discussion, we'll be joined by a representative of the People's Democratic Party, PDP. We had invited them, and we do hope that before we round off tonight, we'll be joined by a representative of uh, the People's Democratic Party, PDP. But back to the issues at stake. Let's acquaint you, as we always do with the procedure, at the appropriate time you can get to be part of the discussion in the studio. The various platforms will be on your screen. I advise you take advantage of them. However, for those who are calling in, we say this often, once your call gets through, do us a favor, turn down the volume of your TV set so that we avoid the hurl back. And the best way to know that your call has been passed through is you would see your name appear on screen. Once that happens, it means your call is through to the studio and uh, you just go right ahead and uh, either ask your question or make a comment. So welcome to NTA Tuesday Live. Yes, it's all about um, the Electoral Act. Well. The 2010 Act was amended in 2015 and was used for the general election. So what were the drawbacks found in that amended Act? And why did the National Assembly uh, deem it appropriate to tinker with it again? Senator Ahmed Lawan. Thank you very much. Good evening, viewers. Uh, the 2015 general elections were adjudged to be one of the best, if not the best, conducted by ANEP. Uh, and in Nigeria particularly. And uh, everybody was, especially the chairman and the commissioners, and INEC generally was, uh, were commended for conducting those elections. But all the same, uh, we still felt there were areas that presented challenges, especially uh, after the elections, the cases in, in tribunals and in courts. Uh, gave us the indication that we needed to amend some of the sections and introduce some new sections, particularly uh, to introduce electronic voting and make the card reader a legally uh, accepted means of uh, identification or accreditation of voters. And we did that. It was unanimous that uh, National Assembly wanted a better uh, uh, process better procedures, better outcomes uh, in 2019 elections. And therefore, everything we did was in good faith and was in the national interest. But you know that uh, the process of legislation does not start and end with the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. uh, it could start from the National Assembly, but of course the executive has some role to play, as we all know. And of course, the rest is history, as uh, people say. Because, uh, Mr. President, uh, based on uh, the submission of his advisors, uh, did not see, deem it fit uh, to, uh, to append 
the signature was sent to it, and he gave his reasons. Mm. So we, we have played our role. Uh, we still have some roles to play in this because the, the, the situation is not concluded yet. Right. Mr. President has indicated that he was withholding assent for certain reasons, including which is the major one, that the time is too short for us to have uh, uh, to actualize the utilization of the 20, uh, eight, 2018 amendment that we wanted to, to use for 2019 election. So we still have uh, something to do or some other things to do. It's not over yet. All right. Yes. So hopefully you take a second look at uh, what the president has drawn yes. attention to. Yes. All right. Let's come to the presidential candidate of uh, Abda. And um, you have been outspoken about this whole issue. As a matter of fact, you went to court. Yes. So tell us your grounds with the whole process. Uh, for us, patriotism drives us to this. We suspect the bill and we go to court to ask Mr. President that he shouldn't assent to that bill. Because uh, it's a, it, we, if you look at 2010 amendment, which we use in 2015, it has helped us in our electoral process. And when I look at this electoral process, there's why we suspect section 52, section 87, and section 67. These are sections that 167 is telling you that even the autonomy of the party has been removed. Where you can give guidelines to your candidates. When you look at 52, they are talking of the electro, uh, electronic voting, and you are now talking of it, and we talk about uh, electronic transmit. Now, the question raised, how did you appropriate for INEC to buy those equipment? If you appropriate, what time do you have to purchase these equipment? If you have those equipment there, have you enlightened the citizens to know that these are what you want to use? If you have enlightened the citizens, eh, how do, what, where are the facilities? Have we seen those facilities? If you look at all this area, you know that it is too short for us. And uh, if you look at it, we are rush, always rushing ourselves in 2015, God help this country because there was a prediction to say Nigeria will break in 2015. And we almost get there because we knew if the uh, president then is not magnanimous to say yes, I'm going, there were already militants saying Nigeria cannot remain if you don't allow Jonathan. So God take us out of that. We should not again now because with all these lacunas, you can cause constitutional problem, and then we we'll, we we'll take ourselves into a, a constitutional uh, 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 lacuna, and with, with, with uh, what I want to say, uh, uh, where whoever wins the election, eh? even if it is the uh, government that wins, the oppositions will go to say, look, uh, if the you didn't abort this process that we know of 2010 Electoral Act. If you have not bought it, we will have cost home because we are 50 percent into the election process. We have already conducted primary elections in the party. You, have remo you are now removing the autonomy of the party. Therefore, people will now take lit go into court and bring about litigations everywhere. And before you know it, the time 20 to the 29th of May arrive, there will be no election, and then what do we do? Anarchy, and we cannot at this time allow this country to plunge into anarchy, where there are vultures everywhere. There are Milton, there are Boko Haram, there are a lot of security problems that the, the government is confronting, and we now take ourselves into what you call this quagmire. What do we do? Therefore, we should, as a country, allow the 2010 uh, 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 amendment to uh, act to be used. And after the election, we can now say, okay, the president can sign it. And we know that we have four years to now enlighten citizens, buy the equipment, and <coughs> All right, so let's uh, turn to the 
electoral umpire and uh, find out just um, how prepared INEC is and um, if indeed there's enough time and uh, INEC is comfortable to do all it is expected to do within this period leading up to the election. Well, you know, uh, the Independent National Electoral Commission uh, is not involved in the process of um, amending the law or uh, assenting the law, uh, assenting to the law. Uh, what we do is that we work with the extant law, we work with the existing law, and we work with whatever the executive and the, and the legislature uh, gives to the Independent National Electoral Commission. As of today, the existing legal framework is the 20. Uh, is the Electoral Act 2010 has variously amended and has also amended in 2015. These are the frameworks that we are using. Now, arising from the 2015 elections, uh, there were various litigations in court, and the Independent National Electoral Commission uh, was uh, represented in some of these litigations. And the various courts, including the Supreme Court, uh, made pronouncements in relation uh, to some of our processes and some of our procedures. And based on that, we were involved in various uh, sessions, in various public hearings, and also in various conferences and seminars uh, relating to additional amendments uh, to the Electoral Act and also additional amendments or additional alterations uh, to, the, to the Constitution. Now, the Independent National Electoral Commission has not been just sitting down, waiting on the National Assembly or waiting for the National Assembly and the Executive to conclude work on this current amendment. We have been planning uh, towards the 2019 elections, and we have also been farming up uh, some of our processes and also looking at some of the challenges and problems uh, we encountered during the 2015 elections. So we have taken on board uh, some of these problems and some of these challenges and we have upgraded uh, some of our processes and even some of the issues um, in the uh, electoral um, act amendment bill uh, that has not been assented to uh, the ones that we could deal with administratively we've dealt, dealt with them administratively and the ones that we cannot deal with administratively. We have also looked at the law to see in what ways and means uh, we can give the Nigerian people good elections with the existing legal framework that we have. So we are preparing uh, for the 2019 elections. Uh, we are not distracted by the current challenges and current problems uh, going on. So no matter what happens, Alec is right on course. We are preparing for the 2019 elections. Okay. Yes. Well, let's come to uh, Dr. Amadi and uh, hear from you what you make of all this. The position of the National Assembly, the Executive, what do you make of all of it? <laughs> Mine is an unpopular opinion, an unpopular to the extent that I shudder at the position of politicians when it comes to dealing with national issues and things that you know concerns our lives. The 2015 elections, uh, to all intents and purposes, was the first time Nigeria had a change in battle from a different government, a different party to a, uh, another party, a transition. And to that extent, people said it's the elections were credible, the elections didn't go the way uh, it was anticipated. But Syria, that election was one of the worst elections in the annals of our history since 1919, if you, take, if you judge by litigations alone. 81 elections were upturned. 81, if not more than that. As I speak to you, INEC has been dragged to court based on issues arising from the election 660 times. 660 times. If that election was that perfect, why did we have such upturn? Even worse than the ignominious years of Yiwu? Even worse than the 2003 that we all want to forget about, saying that was the worst time in our history. There were worse elections, 81 elections were upturned. And it is these indicators that 
people looked and said, there's something wrong here. Even though we moved further, we need to do certain things right. One of the contentious issues was the one that arose from River State, the Supreme Court, that an election was uh, at the tribunal, nullified the election of Governor Wike at the tribunal, at the Court of Appeal, and eventually went to the Supreme Court, where certain pronouncements were made that affected the core of the election, 2015 elections, talking about the use of card readers itself. And so it was important that certain things were done to give some form of legal underguard, legal teeth to the use of some of these things so that they, they, they card read them. Also, don't forget that in 2015, a situation that has never been envisaged in our, in, 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 you know, in our history, where somebody who was coasting home to victory died all of a sudden. There, was no, there has not been any constitutional precedence or even any legal, legal precedent to that. And then people sat down and said, to avoid these things, let us look at this situation and rectify it so that when next thing happens, we can correct it. So, so many provisions and these things were taken into consideration and said, okay, these provisions were brought into the electoral act. Do not forget, Cyril, that before this provision, the INEC had taken proactive measures to begin to implement some of these things. One, INEC has started to say in 2015 elections, there was wide use of incident forms. We no longer want to use incident forms anymore. And INEC, through its own guidelines, in-house guidelines, stopped using, you know, the wide use of incident form to the extent that in the last election in the Kitty State, only one incident form was used. And then this, now INEC says, in terms of its own recommendations to the various committee, like um, uh, the Honorable Commissioner has said, said, these are some of the issues we want to have some legal backings. And somebody sees on and says, hey, because the election is too close, do not forget that in 2015, the Electoral Act was signed May 26th, just two days to the, to the presidential, presidential election. Do not forget that apart from the issues that will be raised, there are fundamental issues that have been raised, put in the Electoral Act to help get our elections better, to help get, give us more credible elections. Why would you now at this stage you say, you know, we told assent because you think it's too late in the game? The truth of the matter is somebody is not telling us the truth, and we need to know the truth to understand why the people do not want better elections than we already have. All right. Thanks for your comments. We'll come back to you. And uh, just as we started this discussion, we were joined by uh, Honorable Emmanuel Omebije. That's my right. correct. Yes, thank you. He is the PDP governorship candidate for Kogi State. Right. That's thank right. You. Yes. Thanks for joining us. And uh, straight away, well, you know the issues at stake. That's true. Mm -hmm. Let's hear from you. Thank you. Uh, listening to the district senator who is here on this table, I, I know that the National Assembly are representative of the people. And they've, 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 they've passed this bill. I, I was a member of the state assembly. They, they passed this bill successfully from the House and it's gotten to the presidency, right? And the president is not ascending to it. To me, my view is there's no excuse whatsoever, even especially when the Energy Commission has said some of the issues in this bill have already been taken into consideration. But today, the president does not want to ascend to it. It's not the first time, the first time. So there's something that is going on that's not clear to the people of Nigeria. It doesn't, the law is a law. It does not matter how late, whatever, everybody wants to take it to be. The law is a law. And I feel that the presidency, the president has the right to go ahead and assent to this bill. But before then, if I might ask, it's not the, lead, the president alone that has a right to pass a bill in this country because the National Assembly has a right to, as well, like he has said, that they have not finished because they have a right to call it back and pass it to law. Is that correct? If that is correct, I think the National Assembly has a duty to do just that if the president doesn't want to attend to it. That, that's just my observation. Well, thank you. And uh, straight away, we'll come to uh, the Senate leader, Senator Ahmed Lawan and say, let us understand those things specifically that this new amendment 
uh, would want to correct. And what is the position you've heard from a presidential candidate? You've heard from a governorship candidate, from INEC, mm -hmm. and from an analyst. And of course, you of uh, the governing party. So, let's hear you. As well. well, I say my last uh, word was, uh, or sentence was, we, we haven't uh, finished. The president made his observations. And uh, he said he would have loved this act or this bill to be passed into a law and then start, take, start to take effect after the 2019 uh, elections. So it means he's not totally against it, but he feels that the time is too short. I would prefer to speak for the legislature, and when I speak as an APC uh, senator, it will be different from speaking as a legislator okay. because okay. I'm a senator. Okay. <laughs> now this time as Senate leader, but we'll still have to as, ask as, you as, as an APC senator, okay. because right. it's your party. First, right. first as Senate leader, right. I believe that we have three options in the National Assembly. First, is to forget about the bill. The president has withheld assent. Second, is uh, to look at the observations Mr. President has made and address them and include that provision that it takes effect after the 2019 elections. And the National Assembly, this current one, will make history that it is the one is our tenure that, that this bill was passed. Yeah. The last one, the last option yes. is to veto. And let me tell you, uh, to override the veto of the president. But I made a statement two, over two weeks ago right. as an APC senator. Right. And I said, at that time, the top leadership of PDP was insistent, was harassing Mr. President, was prejudicing Mr. President that he must sign. He must sign now. He must sign. And I said, hey, this bill is a National Assembly bill. It was not only PDP that passed it. All of us passed it in the National Assembly. And therefore, PDP shouldn't own this bill in a way. And as an APC senator, I decided to defend my, my Mr. President. And I said, Mr. President, take your time with your advisors. Go through this bill line by line. Take a decision. And whichever decision you take, APC caucus in the National Assembly will stand with you. And that is traditional in all parliaments because this is our administration. Mr. President decided, based on the advice of his advisors and the reality, I would have wished someone else is doing this talk, not me, someone from the executive side of government. But I believe that as an APC person, and as a member of the National Assembly, the National Assembly should pass this bill, create that provision that it takes effect from after the 2019 elections. This would have completed our work, and I'm sure Mr. President will sign it into law, and it would have been part of our achievement as a National Assembly, this current uh, eighth National Assembly. So having said this, let me say that there is too much scaremongering going on. Some people will say there will be no Nigeria if, there is, <laughs> if this bill is not signed into law. I, I, I think what the, the Honorable Commissioner has said here is very instructive and might have enlightened a lot of our viewers that it's not like there is nothing going on in INEC. Something is going on. And we hope that we are able to resolve this issue in the National Assembly so that nothing, nothing is left to any chance. Eventually, I'm sure INEC will do a very good job, and I want to uh, commend INEC. Even if there were so many cases in court, INEC did a very good job. President Jonathan, for him to call President, uh, the candidate Buhari at that time and congratulate him for winning the election, might have seen and 
became very satisfied that everything was okay and therefore he could honorably honorably accept defeat so i don't think the number of cases uh, would, would tell you the extent to which the success or lack of it uh, in, of the 2015 uh, general elections i think anek did a very good job all right so uh, let me just quickly um, uh, find out from you do you have enough time you say President should go through, he's sent back to you. Do you have enough time to consider the issues and take a stand? And also, you said uh, you, in your advice to the president, you said uh, whatever he decides to do, the APC caucus yes. will stand by him. So you stand in with the president. Oh, the APC caucus. 100%. All right. And let me tell you why. This is to prevent any contemplation by the opposition that they can simply override the veto of Mr. President. You know APC is in control of the National Assembly. Even though our leadership, the presiding officers are something else. But we, we have a more in number in the Senate and we have more in number in, in, in the House. So we are not going to abandon our president because everywhere the parliament works with administration. And therefore we cannot be different if the president, since the president has taken a decision, we stand by Mr. President, but we also want to ensure that his suggestions are considered. He is not totally against this bill, but what he's saying is, let it take effect. Uh, let me tell you something, Siri. Section 63 of this bill that provides for electronic voting and electronic transmissions is a complex thing. I don't want to really defend... Uh, uh, the position of Mr. President. But when the card reader was to be introduced, I was in the, in the Seventh Senate, Jega had to come maybe two or three times to, to show us how to use the card reader. And then card reader was deployed before the, the elections. Transmission of results to collection centers, 150 units, maybe 120,000, sorry, 120,000 and some 30,000 uh, voting units, a total of 150,000 across the country. Transmission of results from those uh, centers to either local government collection centers or state or national, including the accreditation results, because you need to send also the accreditation. Mm -hmm. You need platforms. These mm -hmm. platforms are supposed to be customized platforms. You will need to test them. And you cannot call for a national election and introduce something that we have never tested. We need to be extremely careful. So I support the position of Mr. President. But what I'm saying is we have time after the 2019 elections to start testing all these things that we want in Section uh, 63, for example, and see how, how viable and see that they are foolproof. Even the U.S., as advanced as they are, their elections, were, were, uh, their systems were hacked. So if you just start with something as massive as this, without prior testing, we could run into some serious crisis and confusion, as Mr. President has said. Okay. Well, Jima, what's, uh, what's your response to that in terms of what you just raised about uh, the challenges you might face with electronic transmission of those results? Look, I'm happy that the Honorable Commissioner is here. And the electronic INEC gradual movement to uh, electronic voting has already commenced since the 2015 elections, even before then. For whatever provisions is in the Electoral Act, whether it is the capture, the capture of voters, um, uh, voters in a register in an electronic form, it's already been achieved, has been achieved. Whether it is even transmission, move, moving, movement of these, these uh, data into INEX server, it's already being done. Now, the issue of voting, you know, when you talk about thumb printing, is the only of the different steps you need to take to achieve full electronic voting. It's perhaps the only thing that INEC has not done, which is not being done in 2019. So, the issue of testing, what exactly are you testing? Do not forget that in 2010, in 2015 rather, when the card reader was being debated, 
It was never been, it was never tested anywhere. But today, as we gradually moved on, I am coming, and to gradually move on, we have in some like in Anambra state, having in in, 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 in state and Oshun state, card reader failure is about 0.0001 percent, totally insignificant. Now let us come down to the issue of transmission. Before now, we read in the papers, and then maybe Commissioner can confirm that. What INEC had done about seven, eight months ago was to meet with service providers, the different service platforms, and even night comsat for areas where the service providers are not functional. They want to use the satellite to move to be able to move these things. Now let us leave the issue of electronic voting, perhaps. Suppose, that, uh, Honorable Senator, and I would be very happy if you speak as a, a senator of the Federal Republic and not any part a, a, a partisan fellow. Suppose in the process of doing these elections, somebody falls and dies, like it happened in the Kogi State. And because you want this thing to take effect in 2019, because of politics, what that happens in, if that happens? Don't forget that the Kogi State issue had to go all the way to the Supreme Court. But your, your, your colleagues at the, at the National Assembly and the INEC said, let's put this thing right. And they brought a document that had that provision, which corrected it. What about the issues of incident form? Do not forget that one of the issues in the Supreme Court was the issue of overvoting. And what this, what this thing simply did is to say, as the law currently, as the law we have says, that overvoting is defined as where more people vote than you have in the register. But what this law simply did was to define overvoting properly, to say no, overvoting should be if you have more people voting than was accredited. Fantastic piece of law. So the implication if you don't do this is that people can just go and will return us back to the era where people just copy numbers. Oh. And the implication again for democracy is that if you don't have credible process for democracy, even you, the legitimacy that you seek will be eroded. All right, let's uh, come back to the presidential candidate of... Uh Abda, and uh, your position, your party is taking a decision on it and that you do not support this. What are your fears here? You've heard about, you, you probably have heard uh, some politicians have said um, there is a, a reason, a sinister reason behind uh, you're not wanting uh, the president to uh, assent to the bill. And that is, it's been alleged that some parties are afraid that they will be defeated at the polls. You comment on that? Yes. Uh, you see, uh, I, this, what we are talking about now, uh, favor Mr. President more. In fact, why we are going to court, we are suspecting that Mr. President want to use this electoral bill to, for his own favor. That is our suspicion until when he, 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 he declined accent and we now see that it's the other people that are talking about it. I want Nigerians to see, look at our people, what we are doing. One, the suspicion we have there is that the, erase, uh, the leader is a fundamental question. Did INEC have a platform that they are put in place. Have they funded? Have you do you have anti hacker? We have country like American that are sophisticated, advanced in democracy process, but they are accusing Russia of hacking their so that's why we're suspecting Mr. President, because as a government they have every facility to hack or not to hack. Now that we have seen, Nigerians are now seeing the people behind this electoral uh, bill. And uh, my suspicion also was proved this afternoon when I was listening to Senator Ndume interview, uh, where he said that even what they agree, there are some uh, uh, provisions that have been smuggled in. These are what would come out again in a few weeks when the Senate resumes uh, or when the Senate started debating if, if they want to debate over it. So we are alerting Nigerians earlier before it happens. We must, as people and as a party, we believe that we must first of all have what you call national interest, not 
personal interest. Not to say until uh, Shitu Mohammed must be president in 20, or Shitu Mohammed must be. If not Shitu Mohammed, let the country go aflame. This is the where they want to take us to. And we are alerting Nigeria, and I'm using this platform to alert Nigeria that there are more to what we are seeing. And you can even see today that, that the same party could not go even for the signing of peace accord. All right. I'm not talking on behalf of Mr. President. I'm talking as a stakeholder who is contesting presidency. And we, we, we have to guide this, our nascent democracy, jealously. We have seen what has happened in other countries. We have seen how other countries have plunged their system. And today, they have been, they, 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 they are, the vultures are already eating them deep. Okay. Nigerians must not allow some people that are ambitious to take us out of this. We must guide this democracy, and we are here to guide it. All right, we have our first caller on the line, Ibrahim, calling in from Maiduguri. Hello, Ibrahim, go right ahead. You see, let us be realistic to ourselves. This is a National Assembly that has never supported this government. So the president is so skeptical to sign about this bill because this is National Assembly that have never supported this government even one day. People will try to cite an example like that of 2015. Is it the same? The cordial relationship between that 2015 and the, that uh, administration is very cordial, but not of not like this of 2018. So nobody should be saying that the president was surprised. Oh no, let us see the relationship because anything that comes out from National Assembly. The, problem, the president has to be skeptical. So, thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Ibrahim. Well, it would seem that um, INEC <laughs> is in a position where the people say, look, as long as this um, controversy goes on, then let's uh, really turn attention to INEC and really scrutinize all its preparations and everything about it and see just how fair and free 2019 can be either which way. So we give you that platform to do that. Yes, uh, l let, me, let me just say this. Um, if you study the cases that went to the Supreme Court in relation to the issue of the smart card reader, you will notice that one, the Supreme Court commended the Independent National Electoral Commission for introducing the smart card reader into our electoral system. The confusion relates to people's misapprehension and misunderstanding as to the relevance and the use of the card reader. The Supreme Court made it very clear, and the Independent National Electoral Commission also made it very clear, that the card reader was introduced to serve two specific purposes. One, to verify that the permanent voter's card that a voter comes to the polling unit with was issued by the Independent National Electoral Commission, that it belongs to the Commission. And two, to prevent the process of multiple voting by people who come to vote. The challenge with some of the petitions that went to the Supreme Court was that some of the petitioners went to the Supreme Court to say that the Supreme Court should use solely the data from the smart card reader as a means of proving over voting. And the Supreme Court said, no, if you want to prove over voting in an election, you first of all must tender the voters' register, which is the foundation, which is the base of the electoral process. Then you must tender all the forms used in computing the results. Then you can use the data from the smart card reader as a supplement, as a backup. So most of the cases relate to the issue of overvoting and not as to the legality otherwise of the smart card reader. No judgment of the Supreme Court said that the smart, use of the smart card reader was illegal. Now, in relation to the 2019 elections, between the 2015 elections and now, the Independent National Electoral Commission has improved on the regime of the smart card reader. The smart card readers are now faster and more robust and contains additional features that will enable the Independent National Electoral Commission to do its work much, much bet better. So, from 2015 to now, we have conducted 
standalone governorship elections in Ekiti, in Edo, in Ondo, and uh, in, in, in Oshun State. Yes. And in all these places, we used the smart card reader. And the issues around whether the smart card reader is able to uh, uh, read the cards, uh, verify the cards, and authenticate people's biometrics became a thing of the, uh, a thing of the past because we have upgraded. For the 2019 elections, the Independent National Electoral Commission wants to assure the Nigerian people that the smart card reader will be used for the conduct of the 2019 elections because no court order, no judgment says that the use of the smart card reader is illegal. So we are going to use the smart card reader. Secondly, on the issue of the incident forms, you know with the 2015 elections, there were people who were apprehensive as to the place of the smart card reader. Mm -hmm. So some people attempted to override the smart card reader. Some people attempted to sabotage the use of the smart card reader. And some people also abused the use of the incident forms in relation to the smart card reader. So based on that, the Independent National Electoral Commission has said the issue of the incident forms will no longer be at play. If a voter comes to the polling unit with a permanent voter's card and the smart card reader verifies that that particular uh, permanent voter's card was issued by the Independent National Electoral Commission and that it is authentic. And then the presiding officer and the APOs verify that the person with the smart card reader, that his or her name, is on the voter's register and that everything in relation to the smart card reader corresponds to the voter's register. And the smart card reader is unable to read the biometrics. Of the, of, the, of, the, of the voter. We will still allow the voter to vote. What we do is that we go back to the voter's register and get the person's thumbprint and the person's uh, a telephone number to make sure that at the end of the day, if there's any litigation arising from the person's, uh, 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 from our discretion that the person should vote, we can use that as a forensic uh, evidence in relation to the issue of elections. So as of today, the Independent National Electoral Commission is moving ahead and has upgraded and we use the smart card reader for the conduct of the 2019 elections. Okay. We have another, another caller from uh, Lagos. So go right ahead. Y yes, smart. Go ahead. Smart from Lagos. Okay. All right. So let's come back to you, uh, Honorable Emmanuel MBJ of the PDP. Now, what's uh, you alluded to, um, perhaps a sinister motive behind all of this? What exactly is it you think that uh, either withholding assent to this bill or passing it, what, of what advantage or disadvantage you think it would be to the whole process? Yeah, before I come to that, I want to react to what the Senate leader said. The Senate leader said, look, uh, they have the majority in the National Assembly, both in the Senate, just both in the Senate and in the House of Rep, right? How did they, and they are not interested in the president, who is their president in that party, right? Passing the bill. How come? No, they, no, no, I didn't that, say that. No, that's, <laughs> anyhow, no, didn't, you didn't say that. But no, you, no, I didn't but say that. But that's what he meant. That's what, no, that's what he meant. No, no. The issues here. Yeah, that's what he meant. meant. So how did, you they, can't how did what the bill get to the president mm -hmm. from the National Assembly? That, that's the question I want to ask. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's the question I want to ask. That's what I want to get to. Okay. So it shouldn't have even passed through the National Assembly at all. If it was not in the interest of the party. No. No, that's what you said. So no, okay. excuse me, please let, let me yeah. correct this impression. Yes, you are not here when we started. Maybe and That's what no, not not maybe you are not mm. here. Mm. And I spoke first. You are not there when I spoke. And what I said, my first statement was, we all pass it in good faith and yeah. for the national interest. I said that all yeah. of us, yeah. regardless of our parties. Yes. Mm. So there there was no dissension, nothing. But you know, legislation is not the business of the legislature only. There is uh, participation by the executive level. We know the president is expected to, to sign exactly. or say no. So nobody said what we did was not right. Correct. What we did was right. But of course, the president raised observations. And this is not the first time Mr. President will be raising observations on, on, on bills we, we would have uh, we sent uh, for assent. He, he, he did 
on so many occasions. And in most occasions, we went back to look at those observations he made and walk, walk the bills and send back. And he assented. So what? That's what I said at the beginning, and that, that is what it is. And for the over, over, overriding of veto, I said, there's, I don't think at the moment, even any contemplation in the Senate. I don't know the House, but nobody's talking of overriding the veto of Mr. President. But should there be, it is a usual parliamentary practice that we stand by the President, those of us from his party, because we have a duty to ensure that this country is governed well. And at the moment, I'm sure that the Senate will not toll the, the, the line of uh, overriding veto. Rather, we will sit down, look at those issues Mr. President raised. And for me, I think it's better we look at that aspect of indicating that this bill, when assented to, takes effect after the 2019 elections. When we do that, it is going to count as one of the, those legislations that we have contributed as a uh, National Assembly. Yeah. And it's called, of course, it's, 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 it's something that will be, will be commended for. The other options are not good options. To leave it and do nothing, and then the entire thing dies, or to embark on a journey that will never end of trying to override the veto because it's not possible. That's the truth. And it's not even desirable. Let's, let's call it spade a spade. There is no need for anyone to continue to assume that Mr. President doesn't want uh, free and fair, transparent elections in Nigeria. Mr. President believes in that. I, I'm not be, I should not be speaking for Mr. President. I'm not uh, Femi Adeshin or uh, Lai <laughs> Mohammed. But I want to tell you, because as a party man, I want to tell you that Mr. President is a man of integrity. And should we, God forbid, should we lose the 2019 elections, we will leave Villa, just like Jonathan did. But of course, that is left for Nigerians to decide. But Mr. President means well. Right. Back so, to your contribution. Yes. But see, what I'm saying is, see, you heard him very well, what he said, right? Mr. President, of course, I agree with him, he's, he's a principal person, right? But all the numbers of people that have been elected to the National Assembly, looking at the particular bill, having gone through it, passed it, did the public hearing, right? All that is not good enough. Only Mr. President's uh, observations now that is important, right? So I am of the opinion that this bill, for the interest of nationality, the country as a whole, that this bill should be passed. Time is, time, he knows that time is not relevant when it comes to passing a bill. That is the law that we're talking about. When it's important to do so, you do it. And that's what the National Assembly had done. And my opinion, too, for the, for the interest of the whole country, is that if it is not in his interest to, to sign the bill into law, the National Assembly should call it to... Call it to and it is the way they, the way they, the, 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 the way they supported the bill when it was in the House, that's why they should support it when they call it back to pass it to law. Because there are two... In, excuse me, sir. In the, in, like in the U.S., everybody has cited examples. In the U.S., if you pass a bill from the House, right, and it goes to the president, if he doesn't, if he doesn't assent to it, no problem. After 30 days, it becomes a law. You don't even have to call it back. But in their own case, he's looking at it as the last option. Agreed, no problem. If they have to take the last option, let them take it. Would you have anything against, for instance, the National Assembly taking a second look along the lines of what the president said? I don't have I don't have any thing against it, but the point is that it's not the first time. So how many times would they take a second look? Is it, is it not a delay tactics? And even if, even if the president signed this bill into law after this election, what does it mean? He's not going to contest the election anymore. His interest is already protected. The person who the, the group of people or or INEC. Like the commissioner has said, INEC, like your father said, is supporting this bill. It's not when somebody says a thing that you say. He's supporting this bill. INEC, not just him, INEC as a whole, are working in the interest of this bill. He said most of those things have been put into consideration. And for now, they, they've passed those things. 
He just he just to put it. In. So I, I I don't think I don't think the president should have anything I, I, different I, if he means well for the country. Well, I, I, I'm not sure that was your stance exactly. No, that Maybe was you should put, put it in context. <laughs> no, no, my, my, uh, the position, All right. the position okay. of the commission mm -hmm. is that we work with the existing law, right? So. And that the existing law today is the Electoral Act 2010 as amended and the Electoral Amendment Act 2015. These are the laws we have. If tomorrow a new law comes in, mm -hmm. the Independent National Electoral Commission does not pick and choose which law to work with. We work with the laws passed by the National Assembly mm -hmm. and laws assented to by the President. All right. Yes. So, yes, that I agree with him. Mm -hmm. But what he said was most of the issues raised in this bill are already been attended to. Did you not say that? He said it. Look, yeah. uh, uh, that's what he said. No, let me just let me just say this. It is. It will be. It will be foolhardy. Uh, for anyone to pretend that there's nothing good in the amendments that have been made. Thank you. There are things that, uh, some of the amendments that have been made that are very progressive and will also deepen democracy. Nobody is pretending about All that. Right. What, what the, the point I'm making is that as of today, with the existing law we have, the Independent National Electoral Commission has been anticipating that there may likely be changes in the law and has taken some administrative actions in order not to be caught unawares. But since we have a law that is a bill that is incorrect, we cannot wait uh, ad infinitum for the bill to become law. What we are doing is that we are proceeding with the elections, which is just two months away. We cannot be at a standstill. So we have upgraded our processes, we are conducting our trainings, and we are also doing things that we make sure uh, that we lead to the conduct of credible elections in Nigeria. So we are not distracted. Uh, anytime the executive and the legislature uh, sort out issues, the Independent National Electoral Commission can come on board and do what is necessary. But if you look at uh, the amendments that, has, that was made in 2015, it gives the Independent National Electoral Commission the discretion to run these elections in accordance with the way a manner uh, it deems fit in terms of the process of accreditation and also in terms of the process of collation of results of elections. And we are proceeding with the way we have been proceeding. And since 2015, we have conducted standalone elections, and those standalone elections have been uh, credible. I'm, yes. I'm just trying to put certain things in the proper context. It's right. been suggested in yes. some quarters that if this bill is not signed into law, the 2019 elections cannot be credible. Oh, that, can, that cannot be true. Right. That cannot be. Look, in some countries, they are even moving away from electronic transmission of results. There are some countries that people use just A4 paper for the conduct of elections. The challenge we have in Nigeria relates to the, to the political parties and the political elite and the political class. Why the Independent National Electoral Commission keeps on making efforts to improve on the regime of elections. Some of them keep on moving ahead in order to find ways and means of undermining the electoral process. So the, 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 the issue is that with the existing law and with our processes and procedures, we can conduct an election that the Nigerian people will be proud of. All right. We'll take a short break here. There will be more on this discussion after we return. Stay with us on NTA Tuesday Live. We'll be right back. Nigerians, our fearless officers and men of the Nigerian military are winning the war against Boko Haram. Today, all occupied territories have been recovered and Boko Haram has been degraded. Our affected brothers and sisters are getting their lives back. However, they are now after you and me. In our mosques, churches, schools, motor parks, markets, entertainment centers, and public gatherings. Be vigilant. Be security conscious. Report suspicious persons, objects, and movements to the police and other security agencies. The security of our nation is a duty for you and me. Nigeria unite against terrorism. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. The struggle for independence had been a long and tough one. 
Our founding fathers and compatriots sacrificed their comfort and even shed their blood. We cannot at this point in history afford to spirit away their sacrifices for immediate but temporary gains of today. Let us emphasize what unites and not what divides us. Working for the unity of purpose with a stronger vision for a better tomorrow. NTA, growing with the nation. Nigeria, the only country we can train with remarkable potentials to excel. Let us believe in ourselves and change our attitude for the sake of our country and generations unborn. Let us revive our cultural values which are our essence as a nation. Let us renew the spirit of patriotism and hope in our dear country. Do not take or give bribe. Be punctual always. No more African time. We can't expect to be global citizens and operate on African time. Join the queue. Insist that people are attended to on a first-come basis no matter who they are or where they come from. Nigeria, good people, great nation. Make you report any crooked person, object or wakajube movement to police and security agent demo. The security of our nation now work for all of us, so plus including me and you. Nigeria, make we unite against terrorism. The Federal Minister of Information and Culture bring on this message. <laughs> Tuesday Live, a network issue oriented innovation talk show. Thanks for staying with us. Uh, let's uh, turn back to uh, the leader of the Senate and ask you know, all along the Eighth Assembly, there's been this talk about uh, things not going well between the uh, executive and the legislature. And there are Nigerians who say, this is just another example of it all. Is this part of the whole scenario that's been played out, or this is something fundamentally different? Well, I think uh, this is something fundamentally different because the, the product uh, Electoral Act Amendment Bill was a bipartisan product. Mm. Uh, there was no politics involved. There was no APC, no PDP, no APGA. We all agreed we needed to make the elections better, even though we had great uh, uh, elections in 2015, so we we didn't have any division. But uh, let me also address the issue of uh, the relationship. I think, for me, uh, separation of powers, <coughs> which our constitution provides one, that is an American uh, system, uh, does not connot uh, independence of of, of uh, the, the 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 arms. I think is interdependence of the arms because. The legislature cannot go it alone without the term of government and vice versa. And therefore, what we always need is to continuously engage uh, and consult, uh, coordinate our activities to ensure that we, at the end of the day, serve the Nigerian people better. I also believe that there will never be a time when the legislature and the executive will all the time agree. There will be times that will see things differently, our perspectives will be different, and by design, the Constitution provides that sort of situation that will disagree when it says we oversight in order to curb excesses of, of the executive arm of government. But when we disagree, what we should always do is to come around and, and discuss those issues that are challenging that we disagree on and in the national interest resolve them. And that will always require give and take uh, in the national interest. So it is something that we have always been working for. It depends. Uh, so sometimes we succeed, sometimes we don't. But I believe that uh, relationship between the executive and the legislature must at all times be that kind of the relationship that is based and predicated on partnership, on cooperation, on, uh, on, on, on consultation and coordination. 
regardless of which political party you belong. Maybe from time to time you, you see uh, issues through your political uh, uh, party's eyes and, and, and of course you will disagree with uh, other ruling party or if you are in opposition, you behave like an opposition. But what is crucial and central will always be the national interest, what is good for Nigerians and we cannot go below that standard at all times. So I, 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 for this one, there was no partisanship, there was no disagreement between us in the legislature. We all agreed we needed to do that. But of course, Mr. President has his advisors, and of course, he maybe he's in control of more information than anybody else in Nigeria regarding anything, security, economy, politics, politics and so on. And based on his observations, I think we should go back Forget about our political parties. Forget about what the opposition uh, PDP is saying. Uh, go and override because it, the veto is it's not even going to work. Let's in the national interest look at this. For us, history is important. Uh, work on the bill again. Those three or four uh, areas he indicated that we need to look at again, and then the time when this bill, when it is an act, will come into effect uh, after 2019 general elections. I think. Once we are able to do that, after the 2019 elections, then INEX starts to implement maybe from uh, by elections, runoffs, and so on, and see uh, how far we can perfect before 2023. Right, uh, Chima here. From some quarters, you know, because this has also stirred a lot of controversy in the public, um, it's raging all over the place. But there have been attempts in some quarters to make this all look like a PDP APC affair. Is this is this is this a party thing, or is this just about you know? <coughs> it's not. It's not a party. A party party. It should, ordinarily shouldn't be a partisan yeah, thing. So, uh, but uh, if if you listen to all what's going on, it's like um, it's a uh, yeah. It's there's a, politics and everything. Right, the, so. the, the bill itself is. I mean, like like the Senate leader said, it was a collaborative effort. You know. Uh, ours is such that uh, amendment, when you have amendments, uh, and, and I've, I've come on this forum to say that I take issues with every time we want to have election, you have, you need to amend yeah. the, you know, and we have a situation where amendments come from the same political parties and political actors that are going to be guarded by those, the same am amendments they're proposing. In the sub-region, I know if somewhere in, in, in Ghana, the amendments to electoral, the, 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 the laws, come from the umpire. You know, the, the, the umpire proposes and say because he's the one that is conducting these elections, he knows what he sees on the field, so he proposes amendments. Now, if any political party or actor has any amendments, it approaches the umpire. But here in our country, is the other way around where you go. But you have imputes. This particular bill in question arose from issues that were seen on the field. And what uh, 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 the Honorable Commissioner described, the whole process he described, talking about the court process, the, the, the uh, uh, Supreme Court process, and the guidelines that INEC is already implementing and will implement. Syria, they were all contained in the bill. If you go through the bill where I talked about a smart card, electronic vote, it contains these things word for line by line. That tells you that INEC is already implementing Based on the guidelines, and like he's a lawyer, tells you that, look, the, the law that you already have allows I make a lot of latitude to do lots of things. But for the fact that these things were introduced in a bill, means that somebody somewhere says we need a legal seat to back up some of the things we are doing. Now, of course, I will say, hey, um, the law as they know it, and, and that is the correct position. There's no lacuna. The law, if the election is today, they can conduct an election, and if it changes tomorrow. They was they are also ready. So the issue of time. But I want to say that it it, it will come to a time where it becomes partisan because once the president takes a position, and I, the other party will say, "Hey, this position is against us." And I want to say that the reasons raised by the, the president they are, they are germane. At this point in time, you can't be having drafting errors. I mean, the drafting errors that the president raised, and this is the fourth time he was raising it. Okay. Why should we be having drafting errors at this time? But again, if you say in the issue, in the interest of the nation, even this National Assembly, when they, in the budget, when the executive had issues with the budget and said, look, we don't agree with you, but in the national interest, because we don't want to belabor this matter, we are going to sign this thing, and then we'll come back supplementary to, to correct whatever is done in the national interest. And because this bill is a product of bipartisanship, 
a product of what was seen in the field. And I've raised issues. Let us leave the issue of the electronic transmission for once. Let us look at other issues. You don't throw away the, you know, the baby with the bathwater. Other cogent issues that were raised that could make our, 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 our system better. Yes, but, Why uh, are we? but you can't take them in isolation. If, can and, you? and that's the, now that's the point. I mean, the point I'm making is yeah. that if you are talking about national interest, and national interest is going to override, then you should think, even this, this, the, <coughs> issue of the, the, the issue of the electronic transmission, which we're talking about, INEC has already achieved that. And I've said that the only electronic you know, voting process that INEC has not achieved is the printing with an electronic box. But coming down to your issue of partisanship, hmm. I think that the main opposition party's approach to this whole matter is beginning to give the build some sort of coloration of maybe we are the ones that you know, imputed it to benefit us. No, that bill has not. Don't forget that the, the provisions were the provisions that made PDP lose, ele lose an election. Don't forget that. What we should be talking about is how do we guarantee free and fair election, especially now that we have an umpire that is sincere, an umpire that is ready to do what is right, and an umpire that is showing. Let me give you a data. Since 2015 till date that INEC has been conducted election, not one single election conducted by this INEC has been obtained. What does that tell you? That tells you that they've learned their lessons and they're looking at the laws and they're making, they're making effort to do the right thing. Why don't we give them the legal seat to take this thing the whole hog? All right. She to Mohammed. <laughs> yes, still on the subject. Um, some people see this basically as a, a party thing. Is this a, is this a struggle by the parties? Is this by party that, you know? Uh, uh, politics about, is about uh, 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 interest. And uh, your interest is what parties uh, pursue. He pursues his interest, especially if it's an ideological political party. We wouldn't be talking of either APC or PDP or this. We'd we'll be talking of what is better and in the interest of our country. And that is the perspective with which I want Nigerians to look at this issue of a bill. A bill that, as uh, Chima said, there are even some errors in some of the so and the president point this out and these errors we are look we are looking at it that is nothing eh? the same group of people that want this to be derailed are looking at those clauses and at the moment that we conduct this election and it's not favorable to those groups they will still come back in disguise and say look for social so provision so, so, so will have happened, and we we'll plunge ourselves, and that is why, for the interest of the country, we are saying that why let the bill wait. 2019 is just a two month election, you don't change. And let me bring you people are talking of only electronic. Are you talking of even the political parties as at today? Names of candidates, the gubernatorial candidate in states, have not be out is still with INEC. And then if President have signed that bill a few days ago where they said parties, they've removed issue of that party cannot give guideline and you have const uh, 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 litigations already going on, they will capitalize on that and ask INEC that they cannot conduct this election until this litigation. Because if you look at that, go and look at that provision where party supremacy has been removed. You put this party supremacy in order to guide our democratic, uh, what we call nascent democracy to nurture. You have removed it now. Already people are uh, in the court. And as a party, I may see it better than you may have seen it. I'm talking national interest. I'm not talking on, on behalf of anybody. <coughs> but I've managed party at least for 27 years, from local government to state to national. And I'm alerting Nigerians that they should look at that provision, 67, where they are talking of party supremacy. If you remove it, the type of litigation you will get in one week will derail this democracy. Forget about And that is why in my, I said we were even suspecting Mr. President before. But yes, <laughs> but they have proved me wrong that Mr. President is even is not aware and his patriotic, his patriotism that is driving Mr. President to reject this right. bill. Mm. And okay. what I'm saying here, they may look at in the few weeks to come, it will manifest. 
a Nigerian will prove me uh, right. Perhaps we should just look at the, the build of the background, the build up to all of this. And um, uh, the Senate leader is here. There are also Nigerians who would say, right, the National Assembly had all the time in the world since the inauguration of the Eighth Assembly to have started work immediately on this. Why at this period? And even as you take us through, uh, let's also understand the process of amending an electoral act. And of course, we'll put the same question to Honorable Tu, because uh, yes, you, you were in the, the state, state legislature as yes, well. Yes. <laughs> you see, this is not the only uh, job the National Assembly does. We have so many other things <laughs> <laughs> that, but this that, is that we do. This is one of, uh, one of the things we, we do. We, 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 we have a constitutional amendment uh, committee in the Senate. We have one in, in the right, House. Right. I'm asking this because, you see, this is so critical yeah, yeah, now yeah, that it yeah. is causing this. We, we started this thing about 2009. 16 and we have been working on these things you know uh, we, we thought we had started at a very good time and we never imagined that there would be so many errors and then there would be disagreements between uh, what will we, we pass and uh, the executive response so we have landed uh, here on one leg because the, after two years journey but let me say that to me this is a learning process I, I want to agree with the uh, position of Dr. Chima that we don't have to wait until uh, we are close to elections. You know, in 2029, by the grace of God, the Assembly, INEC, by then would have acquired another experience or some experience, the exact time of government, who, uh, and Nigerians would have observed how successful our elections in 2019 would have been, and then where the challenges would be. And we start. The, the, the process of amending the, the Electoral Act uh, immediately. But for now, there should be no digression. We should remain focused. The 2018 Amendment Bill, we should take the advice of Mr. President. We should include that aspect of when it takes effect from after 2019 uh, elections. And Mr. President will sign uh, maybe this year, if we are able to do it uh, quickly, or maybe next year, because we don't have to wait, or he doesn't have to wait until after 2019. He signs, and we, 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 we would have concluded the process. Because we have gone so far, we have gone maybe 98% of, 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 of uh, the process. So we shouldn't lose the opportunity of this heavy investment we have made in this, uh, in this amendment process. I, I believe that we, in the Senate, I cannot speak for the House, but my, my take is, in the Senate, we should be able to look at this uh, request of Mr. President in a very bipartisan and uh, patriotic manner and come with a conclusion that, okay, uh, let's address those um, typographical errors or whatever, and then this act takes effect after the 2019 elections period. We would have finished our job, and INEC would continue with his, his uh, determined journey to ensuring that 2019 elections will even be better than 2015. Because I believe that ANEC is improving by the day. And uh, we must give them uh, the, 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 uh, kudos that they have, they have so far shown the capacity and will to, to conduct even better elections than they, 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 they have done uh, between 2015 and now. So we, 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 should, we should not be worried. And people, leaders, I want to take this opportunity to speak to, to, to our leaders. Leaders, we owe Nigerians the responsibility to be truthful. We should not misguide Nigerians that Nigeria will come to an end if the 2018 Amendment Bill is not signed. Nigeria will not come to an end. In fact, INEC is determined to do a very thorough job, and Nigerians are prepared to cast their votes, and every vote will count by the grace of God in 2019. And the winner will win. All right, we go back to the phones now. We have calling in from Niger, Haruna. Calling in from Niger. Hello, Haruna. Okay, we can get through on that call. Right, so we did say we'd come to you through about the electro I mean, the process of uh, the process of amending laws from your perspective, uh, Mr. Sale. See, if if a governor 
or a president doesn't want to assent to a bill, he will not assent to it. It does not matter how many times you bring it. My experience in the House shows that the process of passing the bill is good enough for a bill. Topographical error, is it about the typewriter? The, the, what, what are we talking about? Let, let's be sincere. We're talking to Nigerians, not just the five or six of us that are here. The truth of the matter is, why are we talking about putting a date, a certain a date to a bill that should be passed after 2019? Why can't it be passed now? I do not think that it will, it will, it, there, there will be issues arising. The, the, the INEC is doing a lot of good jobs, but like Dr. said, we need to back them up with a legal framework. So that if anybody wants to raise an issue, go to court, she has a legal reason to do it. And, but for now, we do not have, no matter how good their job is. So, I do think that, I do think that if the president doesn't want to pass a bill, uh, assent to this bill, it will not be ascended to. I expect the National Assembly, the Senate, who saw this bill, all of them put together, with the, you know, and said this bill is good enough. Apart from that, they, 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 they did a public hearing. All Nigerians who, who, who wanted to come, they came in there and, and, uh, and uh, put in their, uh, assert their positions in the bill. One person cannot sit down in the interest of the whole country and say this is not good enough. All right, we'll, 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 we'll come to that later yes, on. But uh, we, are also we have another caller, Ogaga, from, from, yes, from, yes, from, from, from Delta. Ogaga, sorry. Ogaga, from Delta. Yes, hello, we're waiting. Hello. Yes, go right ahead. Hello, good evening. Good evening, go ahead. I want to commend uh, all the speakers in the house. Uh, great night, uh, great Tuesday night series. I also want to say a very big thank you to the INEC. You've all done well in the recent elections, most especially in the state and uh, other singular states in the country. The Senate leader, sir, uh, I am very sure that uh, this Electoral Act bill have gone through thorough fitnesses all through the process before the Senate accepted and attempted to this bill before passing it to the presidency. I am also very sure that uh, two heads, two good heads are better than one. And the Senate are full with a lot of good heads. And if the Senate approves to this Electoral Act bill, you can see the INEC chairman also uh, saying that there are a lot of uh, provisions that will benefit the country in general that are on this Electoral Act bill. And so if Mr. President is not ready to sign this bill, uh, it is very clear that uh, he's actually fighting for his own personal interest. Of course, he's a politician, but uh, I think for the good of the country, it, it, it will be better for, for all of us to fight for the good of Nigeria. Thank you very much. All right. Okay. Just uh, so right at that, there are still people who believe that uh, the president shouldn't side. We have uh, <laughs> should do mm -hmm. it here. Yeah, so, yeah. Right. Uh, so would that be? Uh, uh, would it be you fighting for your own interest? It's for my interest. <laughs> right. it's for so my nothing interest. wrong in fighting for your interest. Our interest is that if you plunge right. the country into chaos, where would we go? Okay. Who would take two million, twenty, two hundred million people? Where are we going? <laughs> eh? Let, 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 me, let me just say this. Right. Uh, I, I, uh, just two things. One, I believe that uh, Nigerians should have faith in our institutions. Like the case arising from the uh, inconclusive governorship elections in Kogi, the independent national electorate, there was no clear provision in the constitution relating to what should be done. The independent national electoral commission used its own initiative to initiate what should be done. 
And that was the position that the Supreme Court no affirmed. Court. Mm -hmm. Now, if the Supreme Court affirmed that particular position, it is not everything that we must legislate on. Yeah. There are certain things that we can use as case law already established that have already been domiciled within our legal framework that we can rely on. That is one. The second thing is that it is always problematic uh, initiating or amending a law when election is just by the corner. By doing so, the political elite do not see the law issues from a national interest. Because there's politics in the air, everybody jumps on the bandwagon of his or her party and begins to see things that ordinarily they, they will see from a different framework, from a different prism, from a very partisan point of view. And that is why it is always better when you have laws that are beneficial, laws that are in the national interest, and laws that are germane to the electoral process, for you to begin the process of amendment when politics is not in the air, when they have just been elected. If you do it then, this whole issue that we are having will not even be there. There is a possibility that if this law had come, uh, um, had been on the table around 20, uh, early 2016, for instance, that some of the positions that the major gladiators are pushing now, they will not be pushing it. But it's because the election is just by the corner. Everything wants to protect a particular political interest or a particular political position. And that's why you see this type of constellation of issues around uh, 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 issues that ordinarily people should see from a very different perspective. All right, Shima. Yeah, the, the commissioner is right. But then the reason why you we tend to over legislate issues is because we have situations where our institutions have also come into question. We see this in this country where the same judiciary has become a place where all kinds of uh, persons walk in, you know, do whatever it is and get all kinds of um, uh, what do you call it uh, 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 judgments and rulings. Just some months ago, the INEC chairman was almost being committed to prison when he was uh, somebody got a judgment asking that he should be held in contempt. We see that happening where people bring all kinds of judgments. So it is important that when you have laws that put things into proper perspective, and these laws, like I said, I am not one of those people that believe that for every election cycle you should have a law. I do, I, I, I think it is ridiculous, you know. But since that has become the norm, and you have situations where, you know, institutions, actors, observers. People go to this based on what they see on the ground. Come back to say, let us amend our laws so as to have better elections, so as to give, you know, legal teeth to whatever the umpire or even what umpires are, uh, we actors are talking about. You know, the politician here is still going on and on about um, removing sovereign. Nobody removed anybody's uh, supreme sovereign party. What the bill, what the bills mainly talked about is the process of nomination of a candidate, and to say that a party cannot just wake up and decide arbitrarily who he gives. And that is what the president was saying. The president was actually talking about the issue of nomination of candidates, where parties do as they want. And then now we're saying, let us bring some level of sanity. You can't just pick, mention any amount you want and just remove and, and, and insert the way you want. That was content. However, having said that, the beauty of some of these laws, is also, it also inspires confidence, even in the, in the public. Because perception, they say, is, every, is everything, especially in our, in our times. Where you leave certain things to guesswork, where you leave issues to maybe or maybe not, you have nefarious activities, and perhaps that's what the politician is talking about, individuals who will cash in on it and begin to do things that will not be inimical to, the, to, 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 to democracy. Having said that, I agree that a lot of times have been wasted. When this law was probably brought in 2016, the majority party there was the APC, if I'm not mistaken. They had the, 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 they had the, the National Assembly, the, the Senate. They had the control. It, there, was no, there was no problem. And then it went there. It went back and forth. And I, I said that it was wrong for the National Assembly because the issues that the president was raising in the, the first time he said that they were, they, they were even borderline ridiculous. The kinds of reasons he raised. The first time he came, the second time he came, and the third time. Now we've gotten to the fourth time and the president is returning. At, and I'm saying that there are issues beyond, and it's also important, the issue of electronic voting is important, but beyond the issues of even electronic voting, there are other provisions in that, in that place that the president should place for national interest, because these things will come up. 
Whether you talk about the death of a candidate, whether you talk about other issues surrounding small provisions there, you need to look at this thing. And for instance, in the nation, take the decisive step of signing. However, however, if he decides not to sign it, if the 2010 election uh, act was good enough to give us you know, an election, mm. I think it is good enough to also be driving, especially given the fact that we have an activist INEC that has taken proactive steps to <laughs> even begin to implement some of the things that are included in the, in the, in the amendment bill. Right. Um, Senate leader, what is... Well, you, you, you gave uh, three options. Yeah. But issues like this... This may just be happening with the uh, 2018 uh, Act, the, I mean, the amendment, yes, amendment, bill. amendment Bill. But it by no means forecloses issues of, you know, similar nature coming up. What is the best way to address the challenges of deepening democracy, especially through the electoral process that we have? No, I believe that elections must be uh, credible and transparent because people must believe that uh, their votes created or uh, produced the leaders. Therefore, they, they will respect them. And uh, there is no better way than having uh, a legislation that enhances the ability of the uh, election monitoring body, the, the INEC in, in the case of Nigeria. So I, I, I believe that we, we, we cannot do without uh, credible elections. But I also believe that we also need to be very practical. When it comes to a, situ a situation like this, uh, we, we have to really uh, think positive about our, 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 our leaders. I, I, I particularly am worried that each time someone from the opposition speaks, uh, the chances are the person will say the president uh, doesn't want to sign the bill because he will lose the elections and therefore he wants to manipulate uh, the, the the process. That's why he's not signing. I don't, I don't think that is the, the situation. I believe that the, the, the situation truly is we have lost time. We have lost ground. We are at the verge of elections in the next two months or so and therefore we may not have sufficient time to try to, uh, to test some of these uh, provisions, uh, especially uh, Section 63 that we, we are trying to bring electronic, uh, electronically transmitting uh, to collection centers across the country. So I, 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 think, I think that the 2019 elections will be conducted in a very transparent manner by INEC because INEC has, has grown and I have no reason and in fact, no Nigerian should have any reason at the moment to doubt the ability and capacity of INEC and those that are in charge to, to produce very good and fantastic uh, elections in 2019. Having said that, I also believe that this amendment process that we have won almost 95, 98% shouldn't be left to waste. We should, in my opinion, we should look at the possibility of a bipartisan approach where we look at the possibility of uh, passing it, but giving the proviso that it takes effect after the 2019 elections. I don't think it's going to be a worthwhile uh, effort for anybody to think that the National Assembly should go and override the veto of Mr. President. That's not going to work because it's, it's just going to be a waste of time. I believe that not only APC members of the National Assembly, but even among the opposition, there will be some that would like to see uh, the issues through the eyes of the observations of Mr. President. And therefore, we, we shouldn't, in this uh, twin light of our tenure, cause some unnecessary uh, upheavals in the National Assembly in the name of trying to, to override the veto of Mr. President, something that cannot happen in any way. So I, I, I think we, we have a debt with history, those of us in the National Assembly, that we shouldn't waste this much effort, this much resources that we have put in, in the process of, uh, of amending this uh, uh, electoral act. We must ensure that we complete it full cycle, and the way to go is not to abandon it. The way to go is to do what we think should be uh, okay with Mr. President and Nigerians, so that we, we get our credit for, for, passing, for passing the bill, uh, rather than just losing all the opportunity and investment that the National Assembly has put there. All right, let's come to you. Once again, uh, we are out of this. And um, 
how to finally lay this to rest. Uh, for us, <laughs> we believe that uh, INEC being represented here has heightened our hope to say, look, we are even gone beyond what Nigerians are thinking. And he cited the example of when they bring these uh, uh, card readers. There was suspicion, but it worked. And today, Nigerians is appraising them for it. They are telling us now that they have gone ahead. So this constitu uh, electoral bill that we know there are, we are, sus we are suspicion about it, we, sh we are urging Nigerians that it's not the end of our this. That we should keep it. Yeah, because there are a lot of things that will derail our democrat democracy. Now, let us have confidence on INEC, as he has stated, and then let our country, let national interests override our own personal interest. And if you are not, we should not be suspecting ourselves to say, ah, a president, we should know that this time around, we must get it right. And so that the future will be bright for Nigeria. Right, uh, Shiva. Yeah, um, the, the politicians here will not be suspecting ourselves, but well, we will be the one suspecting, yeah. suspecting <laughs> everybody. So, I, and, and, and I, think, I think two things jump out. First, the current act was signed May 26th, two days to the elections, and nothing happened. So what is it the time we're talking about? That election. Just hold on. Oh, number two. Almost. Number two. It almost. If it is, if if this bat is good enough for 2023, I think it's also good enough for now. But however, however, having said that, I need to assure Nigerians, and I assure this, I'm not. It's not my interest. Is not in the APC or whatever. I'm interested in the in the institution. I need to assure Nigerians that INEC is ready. Electoral Act amended, whether signed or not signed. If the election is today, this INEC is ready and the election will be credible. Why do I say so? And I'll give you data. Since 2015, INEC has conducted about 89 elections or 91, between 89 to 91 elections. Fantastic elections. Most of those elections I have I observed as an observer. Or my organization was there on the ground. Fantastic election. For the first time in the history of our country, an election that took place in 30 local governments with over 40 uh, candidates, the margin of you know, victory was just in the first ballot was 234. It has, that tells you that there's competition, there's credibility, there's openness, there was fairness on the part of the umpire. So far, for the first time in our history, an election was conducted in Ondo State where virtually everybody there was a son, like, you know, one, <laughs> you know, legal luminary or not, and nobody went to court. In Anambra State, for the first time, INEC achieved results that were not contested in a long, in the history of this democracy since 1999. Anambra elections always ended in courts. Nobody contested it. Is INEC perfect? Certainly not. Are they getting it right? Yes, they are. Better than 2015. However, having said that, I think that to give INEC the further push from a president who everybody, and I want to assure Nigerians, that the president may not have the finesse of approach, but the president means well for elections. Here is a man that has lost election on three occasions based on, most men we have agreed that sometimes it was because of you know, manipulation of the process. I don't think that man will want to preside over an election that will be manipulated. But again, the way you approach this matter of whether to sign or not to sign is important. If you think that there are certain provisions in that place that you want to, because you don't want to sign a 40 process, communicate it and work with them so that we can get a bill that works for everyone. This bill will further strengthen the good job that INEC is already doing. Thank you. Right, Honorable. Yes, sir. What's the way out? I, just like Dr. said, and I uh, I quite agree that signing this bill will not derail the electoral process or the election. And whether signed or not, it will 
not put the country in jeopardy. That I believe. But what should be done should be done. I, 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 I still uh, agree that, or uh, I still think that the National Assembly should send this bill back to the Minister President without taking a look at issue. any of they the are issues. Looked at it many times. Issue. It's not about looking at it, they have looked mm. at it many times, they have looked at it four times. Four yeah, times. Yeah. The issue raised now was not raised in the last one. That's why I said if somebody, if a president or a governor says he's not ascending to a bill, there's nothing you can do about it. There's nothing that you can do about it. That's a veto. That's why, that's why provision is made in the constitution. That could be veto. I don't know what, that, uh, how, what harm that will do to the National Assembly. But as far as I'm concerned, the law is the law in the interest of the country. Thank All right. Uh, gentlemen, there's something that uh, always plays around uh, in my head, and I'd, I'd, I'd like to ask it. Um, for obvious reasons, we have not asked... Uh, the INEC commissioner about uh, how to resolve the issue. That's very obvious reasons. So, but this plays around in my head all the time. Do just laws make a society? Said the leader. Let's have the laws. The law is in. This is what the law says. Do just laws make a society? Well, I, 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 to me, sometimes we over, we over legislate and we make our lives appear like without those laws we cannot function. I think the most important thing is adherence and respect for the laws. Uh, no matter how many laws we have, if people don't respect them, then the laws cannot uh, uh, create the kind of situation contemplated. You recall that the... the uh, an honorable an commissioner was saying they are already uh, they have gone far with their arrangements. So even without any additional uh, 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 provision, that is without the amendment, they could still conduct the the, the elections in 2019 in a very transparent manner. So the quite the answer to the question is laws alone will not create the kind of society that you you want. I believe that what is what will work is you have laws and you have citizens respecting those laws and the rule of law. The rule of law is central. Whoever is at fault should be judged, prosecuted, and that will be a deterrent. That will reduce or eliminate uh, impunity. But where people do not respect laws, maybe because they are big people in courts or they, they matter and others don't, this kind of thing would never create a society that you would admire. So all these societies that we call orderly societies or developed societies, they respect laws. And they, maybe they don't even have the number of laws that we have in, in developing countries. Maybe the kind of laws, our constitution is as big as anything. Uh, the American constitution is, is, is very small. Yet, they are able to, to create a society that is far better in terms of order, in terms of respect, for, 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 for those institutions created, and so on and so forth. So it's, we have our laws, but we must respect those laws that we, we, we create. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll ask the other commissioner. You're a lawyer. Yes, so. yes. That I, 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 I agree with him. Uh, for me, um, the biggest challenge we have um, is from the political elite. Hmm. Uh, most of them do hmm. not seem to believe in the democratic process. You, the Independent National Electoral Commission introduced the card reader as a way of bringing some level of trust and some level of confidence in the electoral process. And then this is deployed. And then somebody goes to design his or her own processes on how to undermine the use of the card reader in the elections. Now, we started using the card reader and it, it was no longer fashionable um, to carry the ballot box and carry ballot papers. And then people now started carrying bags of money to the polling units mm. to go, go and corrupt the electoral process. Right. I believe that if the political elite imbibes democratic norms, if the Nigerian people focus on the political parties as they are, and get them to even obey their own rules and their own processes and transpose those rules and processes to their own perception and their own relationship with the electoral process, we may begin to have some level of sanity in our electoral process. The, 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 the issue of insecurity in our electoral process, the issue of uncertainty in our electoral process, our 
the, the refusal of the political elite to play by the rules of the game increases the cost of elections because we have to, uh, uh, the, 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 the police, the military, and all the security agencies have to have a budget on how to checkmate the, what the political elite will do on, on, do on election day. I think we propose a big budget because we have to customize the ballot papers to currency size to make sure that, uh, to currency standards, to make sure that the uh, political parties and the political elite do not go to fake it. So the refusal of the political elite to play by the rules of the game has continued to increase the cost of elections in Nigeria. So I think that the Independent National Electoral Commission is making very serious efforts to improve on the regime of elections. The Nigerian people should focus now on the political parties, the aspirants, and the candidates, and get them to play by the rules of the game. If we're able to do that, the cost of elections will begin to decrease, and the taxpayers' money will not be used in, uh, um, in, in, in deploying all sorts of gadgets, deploying huge security for the purposes of election. So we have a big challenge in terms of getting the political elite to believe in this country, believe in democracy, believe in the electoral process, and believe that the votes of the people must count. The moment we're able to get them to do this, I think that the electoral process will begin to really, really stabilize, and elections will become very, very routine, and we will not have the luxury of um, uh, 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 shutting down the country just because election is election is taking place i observed the elections in ghana nobody nobody shut down the country people went to their supermarkets um, in, in some of the supermarkets the, the the owners divided their workforce into two uh, one 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 portion should go and vote between eight o'clock and 12 and then they come back to the supermarket and then the the remaining workforce we go and vote thereafter if, but, and yet they had more voter turnout than we have when we shut down the country. So I think that there's something fundamentally wrong with our approach. approach. Our elections should be a routine civic responsibility mm -hmm. and a routine democratic process that is devoid of violence, devoid of uh, my practices, and devoid of all sorts of, all sorts of my feasans that we witness during the elections in this country. All right, so that was what I was going to draw attention to, Chima. Not all about laws. No, it's about laws. It is about Only. laws. <laughs> yeah, it is about law because, <laughs> because, yes, it is about law because... You do have so many laws. Yeah, you, yes, and, it, uh, it is important. You see, the problem... Uh, see, how, how have those... Just the mayor having those laws... The problem, Serene, is not, it's not the laws in itself. Oh, okay. The problem is that right. when well. those who are supposed to enforce the laws... You see, that's where we're missing it. And maybe that's why the Honorable Commissioner, in mentioning the culprits, why we are where we are, didn't mention why. I don't know if it is by design. <laughs> the security. <laughs> yes, the people that are supposed to enforce the laws. You see, look, you will only be wishing for uh, an ideal society if you want the human mind who is inherently wicked, who inherently wants to compromise, inherently wants to cheat. And you ask that man, to do the right thing, or to forget the laws, he will not do the right thing because that's the state, that's the nature of man. Now, now, when you have that nature of man, the laws and enforcement of the law is what makes that man do the right thing because he knows when he does, you know, he commits a crime, he will do the time. Unfortunately, you have a security, you know, system and law enforcement officers that will not enforce the law, which is product of the same society? Yes, they will not. It's, it's so, a product. What, no, <laughs> the, the point is you have, what, a, what you you have a collusion here. here. The, the collusion between the political actors and the security, the, 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 the security. You see, the thing is this. If at the end, and we talked about it here, if at the end of every election, security agencies begin to pick up these actors that come in, no matter who the party belongs, no, even if you're a big man, pick them, prosecute them, and ensure that they, 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 they get, you know, they, they serve time. I assure you that it will get to a point in time we will even forget these laws. And people will do the right thing, right. knowing, knowing very well that if they leave, if they fall out as, as the law, they will serve the time. But we don't have that here. And so that is why it's important. Every society must be guided by law. Even in America, you talked about, you only talk about the amendments. There are so many statutes that, you know, that govern the American society. And that is why the definition of institutions has, by the last one, is said to be just, it's just about laws, rules, rules that guard system, that guard the fabric of society. If you don't have those rules and people respecting them, then what you have is anarchy. So laws are important. Yeah, well, okay. Uh, the, the point of the question was not to say uh, laws are not uh, needed. My question actually was, laws alone, you do have them. What have you done with them?
Yeah, so it's not the responsibility of the people that put the law mm -hmm. to implement them. It's not it. Everybody has the responsibility, just right. like you said. Right. Those, yeah, so, and then I want to say here that there's no amount of money you spend to put laws in place or to run an election that will be too much. I don't think so. Really? It's very important. Okay. Yes, because when you, when you vote the right people, when you vote good people in the right places, you see the result. Okay. And if you do not, because you want to, you want to cut down cost, you see the result as well. Negative. So. Okay, so for you. <laughs> um, <laughs> for us, adherence to the rule of law. Okay. And uh, until we grow to fashion our democratic process with our culture, according to our culture, and stop borrowing from the foreign democracy, <coughs> I think we will be able to we'll see a better days ahead all of right. us. So, as I always say, no one program can take care of all the issues, and we must leave this conversation here for now. Um, just left for us to thank our guests for having come on tonight. Um, uh, Senate leader, Senator Ahmed Lawan, thank you for being here. Thank you very much. Sir. Right. And uh, the presidential candidate of ABDA and chairman forum of presidential candidates, Shitu Kabir Mohammed. thank you. Thank you. Let me say a big thank you too to the National Commissioner, Chairman, Information and Voter Education Committee, Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, Mr. Festus Okui. Thank you for being here. Thank you too. And uh, to Dr. Chima Amadi, thank you for sharing your thoughts with us. The pleasure is always mine. Okay. And also, a big thank you to Honorable Emmanuel Omebije, the PDP governorship candidate for Kogi State. Thank you for the opportunity. Right, thank you. And thank you too for being part of this program. Next week we'll reach you again on NTA Tuesday Live. I'm Cyril Stober. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.